Hey everybody, welcome to Get It with Robert E. Blackman. That is me, TGIF, everybody. The lifestyle program that teaches you how to get your life. Get your life, everybody. Um, welcome, come on in. I am going to today show you how to prepare my fresh guacamole. Now, uh, I'm spoiled here in uh, California because you know we have avocados everywhere, raining down everywhere. We we just we always have them. But uh, I realized that for a lot of you, the guacamole experience only happens in a restaurant. So I'm going to show you a very simple and easy guacamole recipe that you can make with your family, your friends in just a few minutes. Come on in here. Um, so, of course, the first ingredient of any good guacamole is the avocado. And the secret to my uh, guacamole is to have a very fresh avocado. I'm going to give us a little more light here so you can see. A very fresh avocado. And the avocado must be um, to, the to the touch. You see how I can actually um, pierce the avocado? If, a if an avocado is too hard, if it is not ripe enough, you won't be able to eat it. It will uh, be too hard, too crunchy, too, um, it just it just won't be enough. And so we are going to start with the avocado. Let me get my bowl out here. And so the recipe starts with four avocados. Um, any major recipe that you see usually will say three, but here is my take on this. Um, when you are shoveling guacamole in your mouth, because that's what we do, because it's so yummy, um, you run out. So I like to make an ample uh, portion. So we're going to start with four ripened avocados, and here is a tip or a secret for you. Um, if your avocados are not quite to your standards at the market, uh, meaning if they are not ripe enough for you, take them and put them in a brown paper bag. Um, you can use a plastic bag, but, but brown paper bags work the best. And then take a banana. That's right, a ripened banana. Take the banana and put the banana in with the avocado in the bag. In 24 hours, you will start to see the avocado softening. The oxidation from the peel or the, the decomposition form from the banana uh, starts to help it decompose. Uh, you can also use an apple for that. So that's a really great trick. So we're going to start with four avocados in a big bowl. Now, um, you certainly can use uh, a knife when cutting the avocado. Um, you're going to cut it around, and you're going to take the pit out. But if you've seen my shows before, you know much, how much I love this little sucker here. It is an avocado slice and pitter. This is the most amazing thing um, ever. You can get them online or at any of the, um, the housewares stores, uh, kitchen stores. So we are going to start with that. So we're going to take our avocados, and we are simply going to take them and cut them in half just like that. You see, when they are ripe, it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to wrestle or fuss with the avocado. You shouldn't be wrestling or fussing with it. So we're going to take this and we're just going to cut all four of them first uh, because this recipe can get a little messy. So you just want to be prepared. Um, you want to take the little, the little um, stem off when you are doing that because you don't want the stem to fall into the uh, dish. That, that will not be cute. You won't, you won't want to really deal with any of that. And you can do this. You can make avocado up, up to, I'd like to say, no more than... Uh, 24 hours in advance. So, for instance, if you're making this for the Super Bowl or any of the big games, 
Um, you can do it as much as a day in advance and, and put some plastic wrap over it and put it in the fridge, but I like to do it um, the day of. And literally, depending on how much of this you are making, um, this shouldn't take you more than 15 or 20 minutes to, to prepare the whole, the whole thing. All right, so we have them all cut in half. Now we're actually going to uh, take the pit out. And again, that's what I love. You have these, this pitter here. I'm going to do it both ways in case you don't have this. So with this one, you simply take it, you clamp it on, and it literally pops, pops out the pit. You literally are <coughs> popping the pit out. So I'm going to show you the other way as well with a sharp knife. You're going to take it. Don't cut yourself. Be very careful. You're going to take it, and then you're just going to smack it in and twist it, and it comes out. See, it's it's very easy. Either either way you do it is is fine. But I, I like to use my little my little pitter here. So I'm just going to take and squeeze them squeeze them out and pop them out like that. There's the three, and then the four. Um, Guacamole would be nothing without chips. And I have, since we are live, uh, I wanted to show you chips uh, as well. Um, I don't, as a rule, uh, use store-bought chips um, because I have discovered the fantasticness of a homemade chip. And homemade chips are very, very simple. I've already created them back here. So we will be we will be adding that later, and I will I will give you the simple recipe on that as well. By the way, this entire avocado and chip uh, recipe is um, about 400 calories. The avocado, or excuse me, the guacamole dip itself is less than 300, and um, per serving, um, the uh, the whole lot of these chips is. Um, 100 calories. So it is a very filling, very easy snack um, to have. So now in this bowl, we are going to take our avocados and we have our, our little slicer here. So I'm going to slice. I take it from the from the, uh, the smaller end to, to the bottom. So we're going to take it and we are actually just going to uh, let those go in there. Cut them up. And put those in there like that. Get all of the insides out. Some people call the insides of avocados meat. Some people call it the flesh. Um, whatever you call it, you just want to you want to get it all out. I call it yummy, is what I call it. Um, so we're going to take all of that and just let it all get in there. And you see. These avocados, when I picked these avocados uh, today, actually, I, I picked the ones that were really ripe because I wanted you to see how easy it is to um, prepare the dish if you have them ripe. Um, I do like sometimes when I cube them because that's, that's really um, a, a good way. But we are mashing these up anyway, so the less fight, the better, right? So um, we take this, and as you can see, this is giving me a nice volume of avocado. And that's important because the last thing you want to do is run out of avocado or um, run out of guacamole uh, dip when you uh, are with your guests and everything's there already and you don't want to have to run back into the kitchen and make some more and that sort of thing. So um, this is a, a really great uh, thing to, to prepare. Like, again, as I said, if you are uh, watching the big game or if you are entertaining, um, this is a great appetizer um, and it is very filling for your guests. All right, so now we have we have our avocados all in the bowl here. There we are. There, and just rinse 
my hands. I told you this gets a bit messy. Alright, so we have our avocados. And then next, we are going to our tomatoes. So we two nice medium-sized tomatoes. Um, because and you can use plum tomatoes if you want, if you want, what what have you. Uh, just make sure that they are nice and plump. I like to make sure that my knife is sharp, of course. And we are simply going to cut up our tomatoes. I take them, the easiest way for me is I cut them in half and then I, I place them flat side down so that um, when you are cutting them, you get an easy, an easy cut. I'll show you that again. You get an easy cut that way as opposed to um, on the round because they can jump around and, you know, you can cut yourself and that's not what you want. So we will just simply... Cut those off. I like mine a bit chunky. You can dice them smaller if you'd like. But you want to make sure that you are getting them small enough so that everything will commingle together, right? You want to make sure that they're all, everybody's happy up in there. So you just chop that up, get them nice and chunked. Um, now you can, you can use uh, canned tomatoes, but I highly, you know, I don't mean to be, yeah, I am, I'm bougie about it. Just buy a tomato and cut the tomato up because you know it's fresh. And um, otherwise, you could just buy, you know, salsa out of the jar. And no tea, no shade on the salsa because, you know, I love salsa. But there is nothing like the freshness of um, tomatoes when you are doing a dish like this. So we're going to chop up this last little bit. You see, all of this goes a long, long way. And so we're going to cut this last one off here. And then I am going to take... Now, some people like to use um, a potato masher. Some people like to use a fork. Some people like to use a spoon. It really does not matter what you use as long as you're, as long as you're getting it calm a little bit. But I like to use sort of um, a salad fork. That way... I can kind of get everything mashed, but not uh, eviscerated. You know what I mean? When I'm when I'm cutting it up, I can get it all mashed in there. So we're gonna sort of mash those together. And as I said, allow yourself for this recipe. Allow yourself. Say if people are coming at three, if you have the time in the morning, go ahead and do it. But um, up until about 1 o'clock, if they're coming at 3, you can have a two-hour lead time, and it will be absolutely fine to, uh, to create this. All right, so we have these in here. Now, I'm going to take my, oops, I'm going to take my lemon, a whole lemon. I'm going to do half of it. Now, before you all drag me over the internet, um, Traditionally, um, guacamole is made with uh, lime. Well, not everybody likes it that way. And there are a million, there are a million um, guacamole recipes. Um, I like lime in mine, and sometimes I make it that way. I just prefer the flavor, the citrus of the uh, lemon. For some reason, it, it, it punches to me. So I, I like that. So I'm going to take that and squeeze. Now, I'm, you, you see I'm taking my hand and I'm squeezing it. And the reason I'm doing it this way, of course, as you can tell already, the, the seeds. The seeds fall in my hand. If you have a sifter fine, if you have a lemon squeeze or a citrus squeeze, you can use that. You, use that. But this is one less thing 
that we have to clean up. So we are simply just squeezing all of that fantastic juice in there. You see that? So we're squeezing that in there, and it will it will be absorbed by the avocado. So worry not. All right. So we have that. I'm going to put the, the other piece aside for just a second, but we are going to use it. Now, I'm going to take my onion. Some people prefer red onions. I like white onions or yellow onions. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know. It's just what I like. Again, you can use whatever you like, but um, I really prefer uh, the taste of this one. It, it has a, I don't know, it has a... There's a certain taste to it. I don't want to say a bite, but um, you know, with with guacamole anyway, we are combining the flavors. So I really, I really like that. Now um, with this, you are putting like a half a cup of diced onions. For me, this is a, a medium sized onion, so I'm actually going to put half of this onion. That's that's how you can tell. I've been cooking a long time, that's how I know, but you can measure it if you need, but I'm doing half of this, so that's a that's actually a half a cup, so I'm simply going to dice it, and again, the same principles apply, uh, flat side down, round side up on top, and I'm simply going to take, I'm going to take my knife, and, and I'm simply going to dice. Now, the onions versus the tomatoes. I'm going to dice these bad boys up a little finer just because it is onion. And so I take it, I take it in pieces. So I do want this a little finer because, you know, when you chomping down on a piece of onion, it can be a lot, right? So I'm going to dice those up there. Put that in there. And again, there is no rule. You certainly can use, um, you can dice things up a little smaller if you if you like. Um, if you don't want things so chunky, that is that is fine. I just simply like um, texture in, in my guacamole. And one of the reasons I do like texture is because, um, quite frankly, it goes further. Like, if you have something of texture and there is, um, the, there are other elements in the dish, it tends to go further as opposed to, um, if it's just smooth and you, you're scooping it all up on a chip, you know what I mean? Um, it just seems, to me, it seems to go a little, a little further. All right. So, have that. That's actually going to be enough onion. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that little bit back. That's that's gonna be a little a little enough for me. I'm gonna put that right there. I want two onion. -y. All right. So now I have my uh, avocado, my tomato, my onion all mixed in here. And then the last thing I'm gonna take is one clove of garlic. Now, you know, garlic comes in this whole thing and I use a lot of garlic during the day um, because it's very, very good for you. Um, I just tend to use a lot of it. Um, so I keep it on hand all the time. One trick, one trick to this, and I'm gonna show you this while I'm doing this. I take a clove of garlic, pop it in the microwave, for 20 seconds. If you pop it in the microwave for 20 seconds, it actually softens up. You don't need it to be so like whatever, um, but what the microwave does is it heats it up and it actually peels back the skin and you are able to extract the actual clove from it. There. So you see now, it's just really easy for me to peel. See how easy that was? It just peels off so easily. Um, if you have a hard piece of clove or clove garlic, you take it on in and you smash it and do all that, 
that is so not necessary with this. So it's already, it's very soft already. So I can simply chop this up very simply. I can dice it really simply because it's warm. So it works very well that way. All right, so I'm just going to make sure I separate that so I don't have one whole clump there. All right, so we have all that, and we are literally in the home stretch. Now, this is, to me, this is where um, OK guacamole and good guacamole are separated. So here, I will combine all of those elements in this guacamole, and you can already see how chunky it is, right? It's really good and chunky, and it's almost like the avocado is really smooth, but the textures of the onion and the tomato are thick and chunky, so it gives you a great overall consistency. Okay, now, spices. The 11 herbs and spices, so to speak. This is really what separates okay or good guacamole from great guacamole. So, this is what I do. Salt. Now, you can use any kind of salt you want, but I prefer sea salt. I prefer sea salt for a couple of reasons. One, sea salt has some texture to it. It's got a little weight on it. Um, and it actually brings out the flavors. Plus, since since they are bigger granules, I tend not to use as much, if that makes um, any sense. So I take it and I love to have it in a in a grinder. That way, it you can actually see it as opposed to a pinch. Because if you pinch, even if you're sprinkling, you're still getting it in one spot. But if you are, you see that if you are doing that, it tends to rain down. So I only, just a little bit of salt, just for taste, just a little bit, right? And then cayenne pepper. Baby, be careful that the top is on the cayenne pepper. That's all I'm gonna say on that, be careful. All right, so um, open it up and if you need to, you can um, you can use a, a spoon or something or you know to measure, but it usually for me is just a dash or two. So I literally just sprinkle a little bit. That's it. That's it. Because cayenne, baby, <laughs> you will be you'll feel it. You you will you will get the church sweats. Y'all know what I'm talking about. If you in church. In church, the, the, when you, the church sweats, right? So just a little bit because there is more spice to be had. And then we are using Frank's Red Hot. Now, I am not endorsing Frank's Red Hot, and they are not paying me. But as the commercial says, I put that shit on everything. Frank's is it, y'all. Frank's is it. So I just one, two. Three, that's it, because Frank will light you up. <laughs> Frank will light you up. And then, <laughs> to close it all up and out, now I use good old-fashioned Tabasco sauce. You can use green, you can use red. Tabasco has a whole, they, there's a whole bunch of them, but I just use the old traditional red. And again, be careful of the top. One, two, ooh, that was two, see? And three. That's it. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah. See, it gives you some spice, but not all that spice, if you know what I'm what I mean. Now, you can put pepper in here, but to me, that is kind of overkill at this moment, at this part in time. So um, I'm going to do all of that, and because I have done all of that, that is where <laughs> this other part of the lemon comes in. Because it's going to dilute, <laughs> it's going to take that five five alarm fire down to perhaps a four. You know what I mean? So I'm going to pour that in there. And because we already have the salt and these other dry goods in there, 
they will um, sort of soak up this juice. So you will not have a watery um, concoction. All right, so we'll put that in there like that. And then we are just going to, we are just going to mix this up like this. Oh, it smells so good. See, I got, I got a whiff of Frank or somebody up in there. <laughs> so we do that like that. Just wonderful like this. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to plate this because y'all know me, I'm extra, right? And if you didn't know, now you know. I'm extra. So there are two ways to plate this. I'm going to plate it. Let me get the other plate. All right. I'm going to plate it the regular way, and then I'm going to get extra on y'all and plate it another way. Sorry for the banging. Okay, so I'm going to plate it this extra way first. So this way, if you are doing individual whatever, because if you are a person who doesn't like folks dipping and double dipping and double and whatever, a ramekin or a small bowl, you can give everybody their own uh, guacamole. Yes, I said that because I know <laughs> I know how y'all are, and it's okay. It really is. All right, so we're going to take that, and this is a simple ice cream scoop, ice cream scoop, and we are going to take the guacamole, and we are going to simply put it inside the ramekin, just like that, just like that. That, and we are going to take one of the home baked chips and set it in like that. Give it the close up for the camera. See that? Look at that. See, if you want to be all fancy, if you want to take a lemon wedge or a lime wedge and put it on the side, you're all fine with that as well. If you want to do that, um, and that's cute. You know, you give them, you give them their own, their own guacamole, and, and they are good. But for those of you who are good with everybody eating at the same at the same bowl, we are going to take a regular spoon, and we are simply going to transfer it into the bowl. Now. You may already have a guacamole bowl, and if you don't, that's cool. So, just put it in a regular bowl. I like this because it's festive. It's got some little festive stuff on the side. And you can put the chips, let the chips fall, as they say, where they may. But we are actually going to mound this. You see how I'm mounding this? You can see. You can see that. I'm doing the mound. And the thing about this, as I said before, um, 300 calories. 300 calories. It's very good for you. Lots of nutrients. We take that, we set it there. You can actually garnish it with a little, see I'm gonna, I'm gonna make people a little scared. I'm gonna do a little, just a little dab of cayenne on the top for the redness um, to give that little extra hello. You want to be first in the dip, bam, right? And now we are going to take our chips and let me sh see if I can show you the chips. There you go, the chips. Okay, so what I did with the chips, I turned on my oven to 350, right? And then I took tortillas Whatever brand that you want, tortillas, if you don't know what a tortilla looks like, tortillas, and uh, these are corn tortillas. And I take either a knife or a pizza roll, and I cut them into eight pieces. So one, two, three, four. They'll give you eight of 
<laughs> eight of these triangles, um, and you put them on a non-grease cookie sheet. You slide them into the oven for 10 minutes or until the desired crispness, because this is what you want to hear. You hear that? That's what you want to hear, right? So, after they come out, you sprinkle just a bit of seasoning salt or salt or whatever topping you like on that. And that's it. That I mean, that's it because you don't have any of the preservatives. Sorry. Any of the preservatives, any of the additives in the chips that you will get in store-bought chips or anything like that. They're homemade. And they are really, really good. Really good. And a whole bag of tortillas is like two or three dollars. And there's like, I don't know, 20 of them in there. So you cube each one of those eight times, you good, right? So you got your bowl of chips, and you can either plate them like this. You might want to put one on top. You might want to plate them on the side, what have you. But that's it. It's very simple. It's very easy. And oh, so delicious. Now, I'm going to sample this if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. I, I dug right into the cayenne, so pray for me. Mmm. 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 Ooh. See? And I got the little kick at the end. That is really good. It's very creamy. I taste the tomato. I taste all of the spice. A little bit of the onion. And just so slightly, I have that lemon taste that's coming through all of it. That is really, really good. That's good, y'all. That is some good. That's some good guacamole. Mm-hmm. You get that crunch. That crunch is good. That is really good. So, there you have it. It is simple. It is easy. You can do this, you know, in 15, 20 minutes with all of your ingredients and that and that stuff. You can, as I said, put some uh, clear plastic wrap on it, put it in the fridge, let it be chilled until your guests arrive, and you are ready for the game or just for an old movie, whatever, whatever you want to do. So in, enjoy it. Um, make your own chips. Experiment. You might want to, you know, add different flavors into it or whatever, but just, just enjoy it and have a good time. So I hope that you uh, enjoyed this. Please like this uh, segment. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions. I will certainly answer them. And more importantly, y'all, please subscribe. Please subscribe because when you subscribe and give me uh, questions and advice on things that you want to see, then I can turn around and do more things for you. Okay? So thank you so much. Have a great day. Enjoy yourself. Be nice to yourself and somebody else. Okay? And until next time, get it, get it, and keep getting it, y'all. I love y'all. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.